Hey, Brass Facts here. Today my review of the HSP D3 CR Today my review of the HSP DCR3 Today my review of the HSP D3 CRM or as I um, just found out the Disruptive Environments Chest Rig Micro from Haley Strategic. Um, I didn't know my mom's basement was a disruptive environment, but I guess here we are. And yes, they use a 3 for lead speak for environments. I'm going to first hit you guys up with a product description, then my observations, and then finally at the end I'll give you my opinion. That way you can differentiate when I'm giving you objective info versus me sprinkling my opinion in, and you can kind of keep that separate. There's also a crowd on the internet that thinks the micro rigs are Instagram LARP status and have no place in modern civilian kit. While I might agree with the first sentiment, I certainly don't agree with the second sentiment. But honestly, you guys are pretty squared away. Uh, I don't need to address that because you guys are all smart, well-adjusted individuals that can figure out what gear makes sense for you and what doesn't. Okay, yeah, never mind. I'll also include my thoughts at the end on what exactly the micro rig niche is. So micro rigs in general, not just the Haley strategic one. Uh, and I believe personally that it makes up actually a very large use case for the armed citizen. But first off, the HSP D3 CRM, or as I'll just call it the micro rig because I'm gonna give myself an aneurysm at this rate. This is a micro rig with an X harness, that is the straps at the back cross into an X instead of an H. As an aside, I personally prefer the X uh, styles because the H ones tend to slip down over your shoulders if you tighten it up too hard. That's not an issue with the X style, but it's really just a preference thing. This being a micro rig, this guy is super slim lined. You get 3556 mags or two 308 mags. You got your pouch up front where you can put stuff in and uh, little pistol pouches on the side, which are good for you know multi-tools, flashlights, or pistol mags, obviously. Up front, there's a Velcro thing, so you can you know shove your pa uh, Evangelion patches on here, so you can instantly let everyone know that you're uh, single and available. The big selling point of this product is the this opening right here. Haley Strategic does the courtesy of not sending you a functional micro rig, so you actually need to choose on their website. Uh, one of the three types, pistol, battle rifle, or carbine style. Each setup comes with a Velcro like backer kind of thing and Kydex, right? So that way you have retention without using a bungee type system. This also links up with the HSP D334 TS, whatever the fuck they're called, flat packs. If that's your thing, not really my thing. I never tried that, even though I actually own a flat pack. Not much to say here when in, uh, it's a micro rig carrier and it does micro rig things. When installing this the first time, uh, the Kydex inserts were dummy stiff, so much so that my mags would not come out with bringing chunks of plastic with them. I uh, put it in front of the oven for 10 minutes and then I shoved it under a dumbbell for 24 hours and that solved the issue just fine. My issue that I mentioned about the fabric peeling away ended up not really manifesting. It happens a little more with Stenag style magazines with very you know open holes over here uh, but with pmags it doesn't happen at all regardless i trained with both pmags and you know metal mags and it the the issue didn't really develop personally while i like to wait for my planes to land before getting off a friend of mine jumps out of planes for a living and uh he uses scorpion mag holders which aren't the same uh, admittedly however they're both friction based and he has no issues of mags yeeting off into the sunset Thus, uh, I don't really think there's an issue here. Just kidding, I don't have any friends. Uh, over here, I actually run this with a radio pouch, so I don't put the Kydex insert in, and I just put the backer in, right, to increase the, or decrease the diameter, and uh, yeah, put a radio pouch in, just in case I do get some friends at some point, and I can talk to them. All right, on to my opinion. This part's kind of divided into two parts. First part, fairly straightforward. What did I think about this product? Would I buy it again? Yeah, the HSP is a good micro rake. Honestly, there are really only three major rigs on the market, all with their own niche. Do you want to re-index your mags? Right here. The HSP is probably the best option on the market, short of just kind of making your own, uh, and it allows you to re-index mags effectively. Do you want the sleekest motherfucker possible, so much so that you might even be able to conceal it? Boom, T-Rex Arms 1, excellent for that. Do you want to wait 13 months to get all the parts you need for your intricate chest rig? Get a Spiritus. My only real issues with the Haley Strategic Rig 
was, as I mentioned, the straps, the little bungee straps for the pistol parts. They were not tied very well from the factory, and they plopped off uh, somewhere in the desert, and I kind of had to hunt them down. Found them again, retied it all up, no problem since. And secondly, the, um, the fabric on the inside. I, I wish the system was designed a little better, maybe intricate, integrated Kydex and the Velcro. I don't know. Uh, it's just a thought, but honestly, it worked for me, and I didn't have any destructive issues, so it's hard to complain when it works. So on to the juicy part that people are going to take entirely too seriously, even though I'm just a random dude on the internet that makes videos and sometimes offers my opinion. I wasn't initially going to do this. I was going to keep it, you know, isolated to the discussion of how this rig worked for me, but Hop told me to do it, so even though we're, um... It's also the wrong scope for everybody. Seriously. There's not a single person out there who is best served by an Elkan Spectre DR-14. There's a prevailing thought by those that love to be contrarians that micro-rigs are stupid because they can't carry anything. Right? With the alternative being you should go buy like an Alice pack st or Alice style with 4 billion pouches and the ability to hold 7 plus mags, water up front, uh, and that these hype beast nylon shits are just not worth it. Disclaimer, I haven't been there, nor have I done that. So perhaps I can speak on my logic as to why I bought a micro rig and why I think it makes sense for other people to buy micro rigs. To me, the argument that a micro rig can't do anything, thus invalidating it as a system, is completely flawed because you do not buy a micro rig as a singular system to replace a plate carrier, a rig, or even a belt. If I know bullets are going to be flying, I'll try not to be there. But if I have to be there, I'll run a plate carrier. I want as much shit between me and bullets as possible. But even as a civilian in WROL, Rule Without Law, or even full-blown Mad Max status, uh, running a plate carrier is not always an option. Sometimes I need to go really far. Or sometimes I need to go somewhat far, but really fast. In these scenarios, I need to run a 24-hour, 48-hour, or even a rucksack-style system. These packs generally preclude me from running a plate carrier due to weight, uh, breathability, um, and just bulk issues, right? We're well past the days of everyone wearing interceptor-type body armor setups where you just turn into a tactical turtle. The mission dictates that I want to be fast and still have energy left over when I get where I want to go, and then usually need to come back. And if I'm going to go anywhere for more than a couple hours, I need a backpack, uh, be it the 24 hour, 48 hour, or that ruck as I mentioned. Because while bullets might kill me, exposure, dehydration, getting caught in a bad spot, uh, running out of calories, right, just completely burning out, are far more likely to mess you up in a scenario like this. Let me state that again. As someone that's done a lot of survival training, both as a teacher and as a student, the even hyper-fit dudes are not that far away at any one time during heavy exertion from being a hydration, caloric, exhaustion, or even sometimes a uh, electrolyte casualty uh, during serious exertion. And we want to shed as many pounds as humanly possible. Gear that carries other gear weighs stuff. So by ditching a plate carrier or a ultra fancy uh, Alice rig type setup, I'm moving as much of the load carrying capability into a pack, which is generally the most efficient way to carry something, right? That's why we use backpacks. I don't need instantaneous access to most of these things. Everything that I don't need instantaneous access to goes in the pack. Everything else, so fighting equipment, goes up front. The micro rig gets me quick access to a couple mags, some admin gear, like a map, radio, perhaps, and a tourniquet. I can even shove more medical in this front boy if I decided I don't really uh, need the admin stuff. Everything else, belt, pockets, your pack. As for the final argument of ammunition, right? Uh, a lot of the naysayers of micro rigs say I need more mags. I counter with, I don't need a full combat load of seven plus one minimum, if not more, of magazines. Why? Because realistically, I'm not seeking out firefights, because I like to be alive. I carry rifle as a defensive measure should I get into a fight that I can't avoid. However, I generally want to avoid fights, obviously, duh. If I'm leaving the house in the Boog, 
I'm doing so for a specific reason, a mission, if you will. Every fight I partake in will drastically lower my survival odds, and I am a fan of living generally. Uh, honestly, depends on the day of the week. However, even when I'm forced to take a fight, right, I don't want a gajillion mags on me. Making contact with an enemy that requires me to perform a one alpha drill fire maneuver with a platoon size element laying down monstrous amounts of suppressing fire, that's not a thing that will happen to me. It, it, it's just, as a thinking that it does as a civilian is full blown fantasy status. Will I work with the team? Absolutely. Will I, you, will I potentially bound, provide cover fire, maneuver in a fight? Sure. But suppressive fire is a function of how accurate you are. The more accurate you are, the less you need to shoot. And the less accurate you are, the more you need to shoot. I'm not a crack shot super soldier with the typical engagement range, force on force practice, uh, so on and so forth. From what I've seen, people either melting back into the backdrop if it's an unwinnable fight, uh, or the fight just ends real quick. That being said, regardless of your thoughts on amateur ammo expenditure in your hypothetical Mad Max scenario of choice, if you really need more mags, and you think a fight is somewhat likely, but you need to move far, just put the mags in the backpack. There is very little fights I can think of where you're going to blow through three magazines, you know, two on your chest rig, three on your chest rig, and one in your rifle, and not have a chance to just unsling your backpack, pull out your mags, and then keep rocking. I don't know. Just my thoughts. That being said, I'm not saying I don't think vests with a lot of pouches don't have a purpose. They absolutely do have a purpose. That's why they still get used. The point I'm making is micro rigs also have a purpose. Not only a small niche, but a big niche. Because most of what you're doing in the Boog isn't seeking out firefights. It's staying at home like a little bitch or going somewhere to accomplish a task. And that being said, I didn't even cover low-vis operations, strapping these things to plate carries, etc., which is generally how a lot of people use these things. Alright, that's really my thoughts on that. Because... Someone's going to ask how I have mine set up. Sometimes I want to go really far and then come back. So if shit does go tits up, it's probably going to be more of an extended range engagement because I generally don't like rucking through cities. So if I get in a fight, it's a long range one. I have mags and comms to talk to my non-existent friends. I have a turner kit up front, range finders and cards relative to my weapons, right? ACOG doesn't need one because I have an ACOG, but my 11 fives. B, uh, BDC doesn't match the barrel length, and my other rifles need stuff like this. I mostly know them by heart, but it's always good to check, especially if you want to take a first round hit shot. And that's really it. Everything else is in the bag, and there's not too much else in there. And that's it. Some brass facts for you, if you will. Whatever. I'm out. Bye.